All right. In this episode of Mind Pump, oh boy, we get a little controversial. Hey, hey. There's a lot of information and heat going around uh, in regards to veganism, eating a vegan diet. This is It's been politicized, which is crazy. This is the first time I've ever seen a diet actually become political. Um, the arguments for going vegan are it's better for your health, um, and now the big one, it's better for the environment. So we dive into the vegan diet and how, in many cases, it can actually make you sick and fat. Now, we aren't anti-vegan, uh, but we do think that for some people, it's not the right way to go. But we give our reasons for it. We talk about um, how the environmental impact, is it actually better for the environment? We talk about who may be behind the agenda of pushing this kind of new trend. Is there money behind it? We talk about the cancer risks uh, that might be associated with meat or maybe associated with veganism. We talk about obesity and obesity rates and how going vegan may actually increase those rates in some people. And then we talk about the nutrients, some of the nutrients that you might need to supplement with if you go vegan. So we think you're going to love this episode. Again, it's really controversial. Also, there's only three days left. We are closing out on the biggest promotion of the year. Maps Prime and Maps Prime Pro 50% off. Now, Maps Prime, remember, this is the program that helps you design what you need to do to prime your workouts properly. Now, priming is a fancy term for a really good warm up. Now, why is that important? Yes, it reduces risk of injury, but when you do it properly, when you prime properly, it also gives you better mobility, better muscle recruitment patterns, greater ranges of motion, all of which uh, contribute to better and faster results. In other words, if you do a good 10 to 15 minute priming session that's individualized for your body, it'll make your current workout, regardless of what your workout is, far more effective. And MAPS Prime helps you individualize your priming session. There's a compass test in there that you take to assess your own body. So your priming session will be unique to you. It's a breakthrough program, and that's 50% off. Now, MAPS Prime Pro is all about correctional exercise. So if you have any aches or pains or you want to improve the mobility of a particular area, like your ankles, your hips, your knees, your back, your shoulders, MAPS Prime Pro is for you. There are movements in that program specific to each of these major joints that you could practice on a daily basis to greatly reduce your pain and increase and improve your mobility and your range of motion, which again, contribute to faster results. Now, if you're a personal trainer, both these programs are extremely valuable as well. These are programs you can use on all of your clients, regardless of their goals, whether it's fat loss, muscle gain, they're beginners or advanced. Both programs, 50% off. This promotion will not be back for a very, very long time. They are half off. Here's what you do to get the discount. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and use the code PRIME50. That's P-R-I-M-E-5-0. No space for the discount. And remember, there's only 72 hours left. Act now or you will not get this promotion again till deep next year. Uh, I want to bring up an article with you guys because I think this would be a really good way to kind of start uh, a conversation, a good episode. So I'm reading this article by Science Alert. It's a great website and they, they post... Science Alert. Yeah, they post the articles that are science-based and I thought this was a really interesting one. And the title of it was that malnutrition is increasing at a relatively rapid uh, rate in wealthy countries. Malnutrition. So this is wow. nutrient nutrient deficiencies. Uh, magnesium, calcium, iodine, uh, vitamin D and E, um, and A is actually uh, coming th blowing through the roof in terms of deficiencies. And in this article, they talk about how scientists think that it's the, it's the adoption of vegan diets that is causing this rise in malnutrition. Um, over the last few decades, we've seen veganism quadruple in, in developed nations. Has it really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that it can't be a popular article. Oh, well, I mean, you go back 30 years, it was very rare to find vegetarians, let alone vegans. And there's a difference between vegetarians and vegans, right? Um, so for the sake of this article, we'll talk about vegans. That's gone up considerably over the last like four decades. 
And along that, and, and remember, also consider that along that period of time, the last four decades, the general wealth of advanced nations has exploded. So people have more access to food, more access to different types of foods, uh, more shelter. We just have more stuff. We're better off, generally speaking, from a, you know having things available to you standpoint. And yet malnutrition is going up. And scientists are saying this is because less and less people are eating are, are, are eating meat. More and more people are going vegan and vegetarian uh, and vegetarian. And this is important. This is an important discussion because recently, I don't know if you guys have felt this, but I have. No, I completely have. First of mm. all, I want to ask you: Do you know the history on where where the vegan diet came from? Like, how did it start? How did it start? Boy, that's a great question. Um, it hasn't been around very long. Um, I, well, obviously not because we know that you know hundreds of years ago you would die trying to do it. Yeah, you, you, it was very difficult because what a lot of people don't realize, and this is, by the way, this is um, established clear science. This is not like my opinion. This is established clear science. There are certain nutrients that you can only get from um, animal products and from meats. And when you eliminate meat and animal products, oftentimes you have to fortify your diet with supplements in order to make up those differences. And we've known this for a long time. I mean, for a long time, before supplements were invented, before we had the ability to synthesize or isolate vitamins and minerals, when children would have things like, you know, when they'd suffer from things like rickets or malnutrition, what you would do is you would supplement your kid's diet with organ meats, like I, like a, a liver. Liver was a staple in many American households for a long time for kids. Um, it, it might even have gone back as, as recent as, as Doug's generation where, you know, if, if a kid was kind of not doing so well, doctor told the parents, make some liver for your kids or cod liver oil. Um, that was a big one where remember, you know, do you ever remember watching the old, um, Tom and Jerry cartoons or whatever, where the mom would pour the oil in the spoon and try and feed it to the kid and the kid would fight it and nobody would yeah. want to eat it because it's, you know, it's fish oil. It's made from fish livers. It's disgusting. Well, wasn't that too in the Nordic region? Like, uh, was it um, where all the, basically all the Vikings are? They, they had a hard time uh, surviving, except for they found this cod liver oil really helped them to address those uh, deficiencies. They'd been supplementing with it for thousands of years, for a very, very long time. One, one of the reasons why some scientists think that the Vikings were so successful in their plunders was because they had the ability to supplement with uh, a, such a nutrient-dense uh, food. And so for a long time, this is what doctors told parents to give their kids, cod liver oil, organ meats, egg yolks, um, because those are some of the most nutrient dense foods on the planet. And so it is a more recent phenomenon that we've been able to go vegan uh, or, or especially have kids go vegan. Now, I, lo I love having this discussion with you because I feel like we really don't have a dog in the fight. Um, yeah, I'm so glad you said that. Because we're not car carnival advocates. Right. No, <laughs> not at all. In fact, uh, and all of us talk about having vegan days mm -hmm. uh, because I've seen lots of benefits to it. There's a there's a ton of benefits to eliminating uh, meats or uh, even like a high protein. Uh, if you're on a normal high protein diet to having a lower protein diet for the day or maybe even a couple days. Um, but in my experience, uh and all the different, and this is, so what I do with a client, so the audience knows, um, because I, I think it's important that um, I educate my clients on all the benefits of all the different types of diets. Because first of all, diets are a made up fucking thing, right? This is, as when we evolved as humans, it was called just survive. Yeah, you was, ate what, what you yeah, had. Yeah, you ate what you could eat, whatever. And that we just live in a different time now where we have the luxury of, you know what? I'm going to only eat this way. I'm only going to eat that. What's most way. optimal? Right. That, I mean, sometimes a lot of people that, uh, you know, that subscribe to any spe specific diet enough to where they put it in their fucking bio need to wake up for a second and realize that didn't even exist, you know, 50 plus years ago. Mm -hmm. Like nobody would do that. That's just absurd in the first place. But uh, it's something that I like to take all of my clients through, though. I, I, I like to say, hey, let's. Let's go on a vegan day and let, let's talk about it and let's talk about how you feel, the things that you notice, the pros, the cons. And I just don't leave it at that though. And one of the things that I noticed when I would put a client through a vegan diet is they would, they would, man, increased in energy on some days. They'd, they'd feel their joints wouldn't be so achy and right away they would want to be, oh, 
you know, this this is the vegan diet for me. I said, well, hold on. It's it may not just be that. It may have been when we were eating before I put you on this vegan diet, you were eating a bunch of processed food or you were over consuming on, on the meats or you simply just weren't getting enough of other things that you need in the diet. And now that we're eating a lot of these plants, you're now getting that. And so, you know, let's try adding some meats into your diet like chicken and fish because mm -hmm. they were you know, they weren't anti it for, you know, uh, animal saving animal purposes. They just want to know what's the healthiest, best way for them to eat. And then at the same time, I would move them over to a paleo. And, and then when keto came really popular, I'd put somebody on a keto diet. And one of the things I always try and teach my clients is to not subscribe to a diet. Do not get hung. Even if it gave you the best results in the world, let's unpack why it made you feel that way yeah. what was it inside the the, the quote-unquote diet that made you feel so great or made you think that it was so great and let's start to pick that apart yeah i want to in the reason why this is a topic i want to talk about is i feel like recently there's been such a push a massive agenda to go in this di direction huge push I'm, I'm hearing it from all angles there's documentaries coming out i'm hearing it now that it's uh, oh it's better for the environment um, you know, that's why we need to eat this way. It's the best diet. Um, and, and I'm, I'm very, very cautious. And the reason why I'm very cautious isn't because you can't have a healthy diet that's vegan. Uh, I, first off, I want to be very clear. You can eat a healthy diet that's vegan, but I also want to be very clear. It takes much more planning to do that mm. than it would to eat a healthy omnivore diet. And this is a fact. And supplementation. It, it, it requires way more planning. It just does. Nutrient deficiencies are very common in a vegan diet. So that's number one that we need to consider. And when I look at the average person, here's the thing you need to understand. I'm coming from a perspective as a personal trainer who's worked with people for 20 years. And one thing that I learned early on was I want to communicate the things that I know that, that will give people the best bang for their buck. And I'm not going to communicate things that are going to confuse people or going to backfire. And one of the things that will backfire is if you just tell a bunch of people and sell to them really hard that eating meat is bad, okay? Because the average person does such a terrible job of planning their diet to begin with. They don't care about planning their diet. All they're going to do is cut meat out. So now they have a poorly planned vegan diet. And a poorly planned vegan diet is a recipe for disaster. It's now, an absolute recipe for disaster. Now, the disaster. argument that someone's going to say to you, Sal, is that you know all diets require lots of planning. They don't. All, all diets, a good diet requires planning. That's true. But to avoid nutrient deficiencies, an omnivore diet does not require nearly the planning that a vegan diet will require. First of all, there's certain nutrients that you just don't get from plants. You just don't. Uh, vitamin B12, uh, for example. You don't get vitamin B12 from plants. Now, most vegan diets are fortified with vitamin B12 because they'll eat something that's processed, whether it's a cereal or some kind of a vegan supplement or processed food that'll be fortified with added vitamin B12. But vitamin B12, otherwise, you're not going to get it from, from plants. Creatine is another one. Now, creatine isn't essential. Your body can synthesize it. But studies show consistently that when you give creatine to vegans, their cognitive function goes up. Their IQ actually improves. Now, that tells me they're not getting the amount of creatine that they need. And creatine comes from plant-based foods. There's also vitamin me, D3. Meat-based, you mean? Uh, Meat-based, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, vitamin D3, that's another one. Um, there's vitamin D2 that you get from plants, but to get your D levels to go up by consuming D2, it's very difficult. Vitamin D3, you, 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 you consume less of it and it's much more effective. DHA, uh, omega-3 fatty acids, that's another one. Uh, certain types of iron, those are other things. They're very... They're difficult or impossible to get through plants. And so if you tell a bunch of people who don't do any planning and you sell them on the fact that eliminating meat is good for them, all they're going to do is cut meat out. And first of all, here's another thing. I want to, I want to make this point because I know a lot of people are saying, oh, but you know, eating meat has been tied to increased risk of colon cancer. Uh, first off, that's processed meat. That's different. But even if we look at that increased risk, it's a tiny risk. It really is. It's a small risk. The biggest risk that you can have for cancer in, in, in terms of your diet is obesity. Obesity contributes to something like 40% of all cancers, all cancers. And what we're discovering now, and this is something that we've talked about uh, ad nauseum on the podcast over and over again, is that eating heavily processed foods makes people eat more food. Eating too much food is what makes you fat. That's the bottom line. If you eat too much, you're overweight. 
Heavily processed foods, some studies show, will make you consume upwards of five to 600 more calories a day. Okay, so we look at the average diet. And by the way, the average American diet is shitty. I know this, okay? I know this already. But the average American diet, if we look at their diet, it's largely comprised of heavily processed foods. However, the few times that they do eat a whole natural food, what does it normally consist of? Meat. If you look at an American diet and you look at the whole diet all day long, the two, three, the two things that they had all day long that was not heavily processed were the eggs they had in the morning and maybe the steak they had later on the day or the chicken they had. So what you're going to do is you're going to tell them to remove the very, very few whole, whole unprocessed foods out of their diet. And what do you think they're going to replace it with? Processed food. Overly processed. They're going to they're replace it with heavily processed food. That's why we're seeing the explosion of this, all, this uh, impossible meat products that's going through. the. What's happening is you're getting all these people who, who are now believing that meat is bad for them mm. and that, go, that not eating meat will be better for them. And what they're replacing it with is heavily processed plant-based foods that are designed to taste like meat. Now, when I hear this, right away, my, my mind goes, okay, why? You know, where is this agenda coming from? And I feel like the natural thing to look towards is money. Money. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so who who would want this to go this direction? I mean, who who cares for everyone to be vegan so much that there's a lot of money that's being pumped into these documentaries and the advertising and the propaganda to drive the the average person this direction who would want that well we already know who's benefiting right now which is these like impossible and beyond meat companies that just popped up out of nowhere making their way into fast food chains it's already shown that uh, in the next 10 years it's poised to be a 140 billion dollar industry wow and so they're they're taking i mean granted it's like 10% of the something trillion dollar industry that meat is you know, already created, but it's definitely a substantial, uh, you know, business venture. Well, here's the thing you want to consider when it comes to meat. Um, you can't currently, okay, I'm, I'm going to speak carefully because I'm pretty sure this will happen at some time in the future. But as of right now, there is no patented cow or patented chicken or patented pork or patented fish. There are no GMO animal products yet. Okay, so you can't own a patent on it. So when we look at the beef industry, what you're looking at is the accumulation of all the people who are raising meat and beef and chicken and stuff like that. That's it. You can't really do that because they all compete with each other, don't mm. they? Let's look at individual companies. You can patent plants. You know that was a precedence that was set. Uh, a precedent that was set in the '90s when GMO companies created plants. And it went all the way to the Supreme Court for them to be able to patent these plants because these plants could, they were genetically modified in a laboratory and they could withstand uh, being sprayed with these patented herb, you know, uh, uh, these er patented sprays that, you know, kill weeds and stuff like that. Monsanto was mm. is, a, is a company that represents some of this stuff, right? So because they were able to patent plants, these companies became mega, mega powerful, mm -hmm. super powerful. Now, if the average American- yeah, you eliminate all your competition that the, way. The, the average American goes vegan, they are going to consume a dramatic increase in GMO products. There's going to be a lot, there's a lot of money being made through GMO products. So that's where you, that's where you can look. And they're going to push this. And by the way, there's some of the biggest lobbies in the world. These are companies, these are mega powerful companies. And it's one or two companies that are doing this or few. We're not talking about like all the, the cattle farmers or all the, the dairy farmers. We're talking about a few companies that are patented, like Monsanto or the makers of these glyphosate, these glyphosates. They own this, the patents on this stuff. They want people to eat more plant products because when you go eat more plant products, again, the average person is going to be consuming far more of these genetically modified plants. So yes, yeah. there's a little bit of an agenda going on because from well, a health it's mainly like it, it's comprised of soy and it's it, like for the most of these like soy corn, soy corn and, and wheat. So, I mean, obviously that's going to tie back to those companies. Yeah, and, and again, if you when we're looking at at things from a health perspective because they'll say things like it's healthier to uh, avoid meat. This is not it's not it's not true. Compare apples to apples. A healthy omnivore diet is very healthy. A healthy vegan diet can also be very healthy. But here's the problem that I have. 
the amount of planning that goes into having a healthy vegan diet is far as at a far higher level. Now, as a trainer who's worked with people for a long time, and I worked with everyday average people, I don't like this self-selection bias that we have where you have these hardcore vegans who've been vegans for 15 years. And they're like, no, I eat. Okay, that's that's a little bit of self-selection bias. You're why don't you compare you to a fitness fanatic who eats omnivore? Now let's now let's compare that. What you're trying to do is compare your diet to the average Americans. Most diets compared to the average American diet is much better. Right. But a well-planned vegan diet just requires a much higher level of planning. In fact, I know a lot of fitness and health professionals who do nutrition coaching who don't even take on vegan clients. Not because they're anti-vegan, but you ask them, why no, don't it's you? It's difficult. It's hard as fuck. It, it was one of the one of the hardest things as a trainer. It was that was getting a client who would tell me they were already they were vegan before I, they, I even got them. See, I like taking clients through a bunch of different diets so we can start to unpack what it is that makes them feel good about what they're doing on this new diet. But man, was it a challenge when I had somebody that was like, I don't, I refuse to eat meat, and you had to take them on as a client because it does. There's just not a lot to select from. That's all it is. It's mm -hmm. just that that simple. You know, when you have, and that, that that's like why I don't like any diets. That's why I don't like the carnivore diet. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't like the ketogenic diet. It's, you know, and that's what I meant by when we started this conversation that I don't have a dog in this fight. I don't stand behind one single diet. I don't mm -hmm. believe in that for anybody. This one is especially politicized, though. There's a lot more factors going that's how into you know, why it's so tribal. That's right. And that's how you know there's an agenda. Yes. That's that, how you know there's an agenda. This is why we need to address it. Now. And it's, it is everywhere. There's, there's all kinds of different, like, documentaries coming out like constantly and so I, I think that people just need to realize that this is this is definitely trying to move everybody in a certain direction yeah the, the way you know that there's an agenda is when a topic that should have nothing to do with politics and we're talking about diets like okay what does politics have to do with this as soon as it gets tied to politics you know there's a bit of an agenda and that's exactly what's happened it's become uh totally politicized and the way that they've politicized it is by attaching it to the environment. So now what you're hearing now is that going vegan or eating a, you know, mostly plants or all plants mm -hmm. is better for the environment. It's far more complicated than that. It's actually, there are vegan diets that are worse for the environment than omnivore diets. In fact, if we compare it on a, on a, on a, a, a macronutrient dense calorie per calorie basis, it's worse the environment. You try grow, how much lettuce, how much space needs to be devoted to lettuce to produce the same amount of energy that you would to produce pork, for example. Okay. When you calculate that in there, lettuce in comparison to pork produces three times as much uh, greenhouse gases. Okay. Now, beef is the highest, uh, you know, greenhouse gas producing animal product. L lettuce in comparison to beef is about one to one, mm. they're almost about equal. When you calculate in the waste that's produced, so when you produce uh, vegetable and plant products, we tend to throw away a lot of them, more so. The average person throws away, I think 40% of it gets thrown away, whereas 30, it's more like 30% for animal-based products. When you, when you factor that in, then you start to see that it's far more, uh, 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 it's far more complicated than people believe. Right. And so it's not as easy as don't eat meat, save the environment. In fact, you, you guys want to know what kind of foods have the lowest greenhouse gas, em gas emission uh, and carbon footprint, mm -hmm. heavily processed high sugar foods. Uh -huh. Heavily processed high sugar foods have, will, will produce less greenhouse gases and have the less the, the smallest carbon footprint. So now, that's all any, we should eat. Yeah. Uh, no, we shouldn't, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. I think what we need to understand is we what's- We want to be obese and diabetes ridden. Here's yeah. the- Exactly. The, the planet will go on though. That, no, <laughs> yeah. it won't. It Except actually won't. now, and let's look at the health costs. <laughs> what's best for the environment is what's best for our health when we're talking about ourselves. Healthy humans in all aspects, healthy, uh, you know, good mental health, psychological health, and physical health is what's going to be good for the environment because healthy humans make better decisions. They need less medicine. We're more productive. We're more efficient. We lead more meaningful lives. At the end of the day, a healthy person, it's what's going to be better for everybody, not an unhealthy person. And so if we take a bunch of people who don't plan their fucking diets to begin with and we tell them and we make, we sell the case and we politicize it because here's what happens too when you politicize things. People start to pick sides yeah. like, oh, wait a minute. I'm a, I vote this way. Therefore, I have to, this is the side that I'm going to be on. When you start to politicize, you're going to get a bunch of uninformed people avoiding meat 
You're going to create nutrient deficiencies. You're going to promote obesity because of the increased uh, rate of processed food consumption, which promotes overeating. So we're going to have less healthy people, and that's going to be bet worse for the environment. Well, I want to I want to talk about some of the things that we all think is really good about the vegan diet. Let's talk because. I feel like all of us in here intermittently have vegan days. We yes. intermittently have carnivore days. So we encourage people that listen to the show that there are some health benefits to doing this. And I know there's people listening right now that for cuz I used to have clients like this that have adopted this diet and have seen just unbelievable changes in their life and they'll just they'll never move away from it because of these benefits. And I, what I would want to do is I, I, I want to educate them on probably what they're going through or what they're feeling and why that is, and then and then also how and why we use it the way we do. Right. Well, I like uh, I love plant based foods, um, and and I like them to be unprocessed, just like I like my meats to be unprocessed. I'm not promoting people eat hot dogs and you know uh, you know sausage patties and stuff like that. I'm I'm talking about whole natural meats, and I also like whole natural plants uh, like fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, they're extremely healthy and they have tremendous benefits. And I don't think people eat enough of all those types of things. They've got beneficial fiber. There's antioxidants that you can get from them. And from a, a modern health standpoint, it does make sense to consume less energy-dense foods uh, uh, more often because we're not as active, right? So I can eat a big bowl of vegetables and not get tons of calories. And that actually makes sense nowadays. Now I can go the reverse, of course. If I go heavily processed food, mm. I'll eat tons. And here's the thing too. Most heavily processed foods are plant-based. They're not animal-based. There are processed meat products, but when you go in the grocery store, most of the things that are in, in boxes and packages and wrappers are plant-based. They're not animal-based. I mean, you're sure you can buy sausage, hot dogs, you know, uh, you know, bacon, you can buy beef jerky, which is would consider processed meat. But most of the time when you're buying things in boxes and wrappers, they're made with what? Like wheat, soy, mm -hmm. corn, sugar, you know, that kind of stuff. But if you eat whole natural foods, I, I uh, the evidence is, in my opinion, quite clear that a lot of whole natural plants is very, very good for you. I'm just against the whole demonizing meat side of oh, it. Oh, yeah, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, there's days where I, I mean, I focus on whole natural vegetables specifically for my digestion and also to lower inflammation and just, you know, go through that kind of recuperative type of a day where I'm a little, I'm, I'm not necessarily super avoiding meat, but to, to take a break from it and really just focus on different, you know, uh, benefits, just eating vegetables will provide that for me and, and upping that amount. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what I have found that I have found that, you know, because I do, I have a client come in the very first two weeks with me always was, you know, eat how you normally eat. don't change change anything. I don't try and impress me. I just want to see your habits, your behaviors. And so then I always got a really good little screenshot of a, what an average couple weeks looks like for this client that I would have. And then I would take them through all these different types of diets and we would talk about them as we go through them. And one of the things that I always noticed that when I took somebody on a vegan diet and what, what was happening before was this person just rarely ever got a bowl of berries. Like they're just, they've never done that mm -hmm. before. Like literally never done that. Maybe they have an apple or a banana every once in a while, but never because they, we're going all vegan. You start to do things you never would do before. You start eating, you know, things with lots of nuts and seeds on it. You start eating bowls of berries. You start having bowls of vegetables, big giant salads. And so what they would, so what I'd show them is like, okay, well, here's what you were eating before. Look at, we went two days in a row and you didn't have but maybe a cup of a cup or two of broccoli. That's it. You know what I'm saying? That's all you had. And we had one or two servings of fruit and all it was was an apple or a banana or you didn't really have any nuts or seeds in your diet because you thought those were bad for you, right? And then now we're on this vegan diet and man, you're getting these seeds, these nuts, we're having lots of berries, we're having large portions of vegetables. And it, it would be that is what I would, would be able to show them the difference. And what would they normally replace because they're eating more of that? Right. The processed uh, non-meat products. Right. Oftentimes it was replacing the cookies, the bread, the pastas. Yep. It's replacing the chips, which are all vegan foods. Those are all also vegan foods. So it wasn't necessarily that they were like not yeah. eating meat. They're eating more whole natural foods, right? In the and, and they were in the form of uh, of you know vegetables and, and fruits and nuts and that kind of stuff, right? And then I what I would do with that same person now we would start to 
you know, insert meats and stuff. And now we would start moving more towards like a paleo-esque type of diet. And 99% of them would feel just as amazing, if not more. We'd add, start adding some muscle because all of a sudden their protein intake would naturally come up and they'd feel just fine and great. And that would be me trying to show them that, listen, it wasn't the vegan diet. It was, hey, you just you were lacking in antioxidants and fiber and all these micronutrients that you get from all these fruits and vegetables because you just flat out weren't eating enough. You were putting cookies and bullshit things in your diet and you weren't getting enough of this. You know, it, it, it's, it's such a such a good point, uh, Adam. You know, and it's here's some points that I want to make about this. And and you can talk to a lot of health coaches and fitness coaches and some of the hardest clients I've ever worked with. You ever get a vegan that was obese and you had to train them and help yeah. them lose weight? Wow, was that difficult. Oh, yeah. Very, very difficult to work with. There was very, very little things that we could work with. And their diet was comprised of a lot of these processed foods. They're more, they were the most difficult people to work work with because I didn't have the nutrient dense satiating effects of these, you know, lean meats. You know, here's some history that I think people need to understand. First off, these kind of diets are possible now because of modern technology. When the agricultural revolution happened around 10,000 years ago, and this is evolutionary scientists are, are quite clear on this. There were some big changes that happened to humans. We got shorter and our health actually got worse. Now, there were some benefits to it. We didn't have to roam. We could sit in one place and grow food and we could specialize our skills, which was great for society. We could grow big societies. But even if you read some of the accounts of some of the early European sailors that came to uh, you know the New World, people who came to the Americas from Spain, and from a lot of these European countries. And when they would write about what they saw, they would say things like tall, muscular, you know, and then of course they would label them savages or whatever, but they would say things like they were very tall, very muscular, they had all their teeth because they were coming from being dependent on a few staple crops to a place where there were lots of hunter gatherers. And these people were very vibrant, very healthy. Um, when you talk to nutritional experts who work with women, for example, on balancing their hormones, oftentimes to get women to get their periods again, they have to recommend that they eat things like organ meats, egg yolks. Um, sometimes people lose their periods because they go on a vegan diet. And I'm not demonizing the vegan diet by any stretch of the imagination. All I'm saying is that the planning that's required is much, much, much higher. I think that's the point that I keep trying to make over and over again and trying to hammer. And I think it's a dangerous present that we're doing. We're, we keep pushing people in direction. It's going to fuck up. It's going to fuck up a lot of people's health. Well, especially what, I, what I'm seeing is, and, it, and I know there's for sure somebody who's listening, who's like hardcore vegan. They've been doing it for 10 years. It's been the best thing of life. Like, I'm not talking to you. Like, I'm, I'm not worried about you. No, like, the best vegans like that you, I've seen. Like, you've got this, dude. Mm -hmm. This isn't, this conversation isn't for you. It's for every fucking other person. It's for mm -hmm. the, my little cousin and my, and my uh, little niece who watched the What the Health documentary mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and my other cousin who's, who's in high school right now and all this propaganda is go circulating the high school right now. And, you know, now they're starting to, you know, shame kids that are eating all this meat. And it's like now the cool, hip and trendy thing to not eat meat. It's like no education around it, no real planning, no real understanding, and they're trying to make an attempt at like mm -hmm. just not eating meat and staying away from it for all the wrong reasons. Like that's who the fuck I'm talking to yeah. right now. I'm not talking to somebody who just like I'm not talking to the carnivore person, the keto person, the paleo person who's got their shit dialed. Like that's good for you. If that works for you, you feel amazing and you're consistent. Like what Mind Pump came about was to talk to the general population. When we came in this space, we saw a bunch of fitness idiots that were all fighting over the same fucking 2% people. Well, I'm interested in the 98%, the average person who doesn't have the education, that doesn't have the understanding, but wants to make better, healthier choices. And they're hearing this propaganda that the vegan diet is a better, healthier choice. And that's just flat out it's bullshit. It's misinformation. No, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's not yeah. true. Yeah. And the, the best, the, the most consistent and best vegans that I've worked with or known were, were this kind of person, this kind of an avatar. It's somebody who is a vegan for moral and ethical purposes. So they're against killing of animals. So they're driven by that, that, uh, that feeling to not eat meat or to avoid eating meat, which I can, I a hundred percent stand behind. If you feel that strongly about, uh, you know, animals and, and you don't think they should be killed, uh, for, for consumption, you are, you are taking action with the way you live. And I always respect that. I always respect, like, I hate it when people preach, but they don't, 
practice what they preach. Right. But a vegan who's like, no, I don't think animals should be killed. I don't think we should raise them to be killed. Um, I think they should be treating a, treated a particular way. Therefore, I don't eat animals. I respect that. It's also, studies will show those are the most consistent people. They tend to stay vegan. The vegans that go on and off and do it terribly are the ones that do it for health purposes. I'm doing it become healthy. Those are the people that go on and off with it. The second thing is the vegans who do it for moral reasons, they sit down and they try to plan it out. They go, okay, this is how I want to eat. I got to figure this out. I'm really trying to understand what are the foods I need to eat? What do I need to supplement with to make sure that I don't have nutrient deficiencies? And they tend to be the most consistent. And these are the people who who do the best. These are also the people that that tend to uh, agree with a post like you did on your Instagram the other day. Oh, I they mean, all do. I mean, in- incredible post because you're not you're not calling out and saying that vegan is bad. No. No, it's just terrible advice for the average person. And if you do the planning, you do the work, sure, it could be amazing for you. Mm-hmm. Problem is, though, most people are just lazy and yep. they're not going to do that. Most people don't follow any diet. Yep. And, and that's a dangerous one to just say, hey, I'm going to eliminate an essential nutrient. Yes. And here's the other thing too, okay? And by the way, if it wasn't vegan, let's say there was this huge push to go keto or there was this huge push to go carnivore, um, I would be just as- We did. I would be just- We, we did. Have, we yeah, did. Yeah. We, ca- we came out when, it, when keto first hit the scene before it became popular and bastardized. We talked about it. We talked about the pros of it and how it can be beneficial. We all went through it, explained our experience mm-hmm. of it, things we liked, things we didn't like. And then what happened over the course of the net, the following year to two years, so we did the ketogenic, the very original ketogenic episode was almost three years ago now. And we had Don, Don Diagostino on the show. We talked all about the benefits of it. But then it got fucking popular. And then all the keto podcasts started. Then all the keto books came out. And now people are changing their profile names to keto this, keto that. And that's where we came out and said some shit. It's like, hey, you, know, you guys just <laughs> took something that had, had does have some health benefits. And there is a, a small population of people that this could be extremely good for. And now everyone's doing it because it's the next popular thing to do. Now it's bad. And, and now, you're, you're going to run into some problems because what you need to understand, just like with workouts, okay? Just like with workouts, your diet, what what's going to work best for you can be very different from what works best for the next person. So I'll, I'll use a good example. Let's go in the opposite direction. Okay. Our friend, Michaela Peterson, we had her on the show a long time ago. This is Jordan Peterson's daughter. She's a huge carnivore diet. So she's the opposite. All she eats is meat and she eats no plant products whatsoever. Now, from her standpoint, the carnivore diet is amazing. Now, she suffered from severe autoimmune issues, and depression. She would have these crazy autoimmune flare-ups anytime she would eat a plant-based products product. So her body just has this reaction. Now for her, eating a carnivore diet is the best diet. She's the healthiest she's ever been. I can't argue that. What you need to understand about your metabolism and your body is it's like a fingerprint. And then when you throw in your own emotional connections to food, it gets even more individualized. So are there people that a vegan diet will work best for? Absolutely. But the problem is making it cool for everybody and pushing it as a widespread agenda because I know the average person is going to suffer from health issues, nutrient deficiencies. They're not going to do it right. And no diet is best for everybody. And that's where the problem lies. And the reason why this vegan push to me is more dangerous and more nefarious than the previous diet pushes, like the low-carb diet push, the low-fat diet push, Atkins, keto, fasting. The reason why the vegan agenda... Because you're eliminating one of the most nutrient-dense yeah. foods in the world. But not just That's that. That's why. Yes. But That's it's, the main yeah. reason but why. But it's not just that. It's because they've taken a diet and they've attached, they've attached morality to it. Mm-hmm. Re- diets tend to have a religious com- a feeling around them anyway. Like everybody in fitness knows this. Like if you're at somebody, if you're at your in-laws' house, you never talk about politics, religion, and diet. That's the other one, right? Uh, a lot of people don't talk about that. You start talking about diet in Texas, and, and you start having a big. You, you can have huge arguments. Like if I'm a if I'm a keto guy and I'm talking to somebody who's like a low fat guy, and we're going back and forth. We can actually get into a massive argument. People in the fitness space knows it knows this. Re- diets can become religious in nature because we identify with them. This one right here in particular, they're attaching all kinds of morality. I have never heard anybody say it's moral to eat keto. It's moral and ethical to eat, you know, uh, low fat, or it's moral and ethical to eat carnivore. Nobody says that about any diets except mm-hmm. for the vegan one. 
now that we've attached morality to it, holy shit, you want to talk about something that's got some some danger to it, you got to be very careful because I've run into a lot of people who want to do the right thing, who've bought into the moral arguments of veganism and whose health is suffering terribly. I had one client that I was working with virtually. This young lady, she was anemic. She wasn't getting her period and her hormones were all over the place. And this poor girl, the the, the prescription was, you probably need to start, we need, we need to start throwing some, in fact, she had her doctor tell her, you need to start eating some meat. You need to start eating, you know, some egg yolks. You need the cholesterols. You need some of these nutrients. And she was so torn because of this moral dilemma. And at the end of the day, you know, the, the, the thing I told her, and I didn't want to push her in any direction because I don't want to push, you know, I, I want people, people have to make their own decisions. This is another thing I've learned as a trainer is that they have to make, you can't push someone into something. You can, they have kind of, you can inform them, but then they have to make their own decision. Otherwise, if you push too hard, what ends up happening is they, they push in the opposite direction. And so I, you know, I, I, I told her, I said, look, at the end of the day, the animal that you need to be most concerned with is, the, is your own self. Right. You are the most important animal on the planet in, in, in terms of what you should be concerned with. Because if you're not healthy, you can't help other animals. You can't make a difference in the world. It's just like the argument I tell parents when parents are like, I can't work out because it takes you know time away from my kids. And I tell them, if you're not healthy, you're not giving your, your kids good time. A healthy fit you is better for everything. So at the end of the day, you have to consider the animal that's most important. And if you find that eating animal products makes you healthier, then that's probably the best decision that you can make for yourself. And you can help more. I mean, you can eat animal products and, and then because you're healthy, you have more energy to devote to better farming practices, better treatment of animals, mm -hmm. and, and just better information in general. If you're not healthy, you're not doing anybody any favors. I feel like the the big one right now is is the environmental and carbon footprint. Yes. Push. That, to me, is the one that, when I hear the younger generation That's coming That's what worries up, me the most, actually, even beyond the moral aspect. Because the moral aspect, I can see, you know, in terms of people, like, really grabbing onto that and be like, well, I'll, cruelty. Like, let's let's address cruelty in this world, and here's, like, how I see it. And I can see how their perspective or a life look is at a, it like that. Or a life is a life, right? Right, you, you a life is a life. But... But you see this just all of a sudden being wrapped into, even though it's not checked, it's not checked. It's, it, this is, becomes popular opinion overnight because of it's so politicized and wrapped into everything else in terms of uh, global warming, in terms of like, you know, all these like industrial farm complexes are the, the reason for the entire thing. And it's like, do, is that true? Like, have you even asked yourself if that's true? Like, always ask yourself if that's true. Look at the counterpoints. Look at it's, other statistics, other information. And you have you, to look at it all. And you have to. It's 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 very complicated. It's extremely complicated. More complicated than people um, want to admit, especially politicians. They'll never admit that a problem is too complicated to solve with laws. You know, they always have the answer with a law. Like, oh, we'll just pass a law. And, you know, here's a good example. Plastic straws. Here's a great example. You know what? You know what I noticed now at Starbucks. Now instead of getting a straw, they have these massive plastic sippy cup lids, lids that they that they put on the top of every. <laughs> yeah. So now instead of a straw, which is they've melted twenty of them to yeah, make one, one thing. tenth of the plastic. <laughs> now we're throwing away these massive lids that are far more plastic. Now I'm not saying that banning mm. straws that people knew that that would happen. But nobody considered the unintended consequences right. of a, just passing a I particular enjoy the law. Sippy thing better. Though, yeah. I'll be but do you, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So what would the unintended consequences be of a bunch of of the average person, the average American? Consider the average American. They place almost no no effort and in planning into their diet. They value food mainly for its palatability and its taste. What would the what would the unintended consequences be about just scaring everybody away from meat? No, 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 don't eat meat. It's bad for the environment, bad for your health. Just eat uh, plant foods. The unintended consequences, I would, I'm going to guess. I'm going to make my guess, but it's an educated guess, and I'd bet everything on it. Higher processed food consumption. Processed foods also come in lots of wrappers, plastics, and other things that we need to throw away. It's going to contribute to obesity because processed foods encourage more food consumption. Fat people are sicker, require more medication, are less productive, and generally worse for the environment, okay? Unhealthy people are just generally worse for the world. So that's another unintended consequence. Higher GMO consumption. The average American 
is going to avoid meat, but they're not going to go organic. They're just going to eat plant-based wrap, wrapper products, whatever. That's going to be more chemicals sprayed into the soil, more glyphosates sprayed all over the place, which also kill lots of other uh, organisms like bees and animals that are important for the survival of the earth. We're not considering all of the downstream effects of this, what they're trying to make it sound like the super simple solution to the environment. And then we're also not considering that it's more complicated in terms of which one really produces more waste yeah, really. when we're comparing apples to apples. Right. Beef, they always use beef because beef is the worst one. But that's not the only animal that we eat. We also eat chicken and pork and fish and other animal products. Those animal products are actually far cleaner on the environment. For example, I use the, the example of pork. Pork produces three times less the greenhouse gas emissions than lettuce would for the amount of energy being produced type of deal. So you have to consider all of these things and realize it's way more complicated. What we need to do, here's what we need to do with food. What we need to do with food is 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 connected to what what's most important, most clear, which is what is good for us mm -hmm. health wise. Right. Forget everything else. Stay there. Stay there for a second. We haven't even gotten fuck. We haven't even won that argument yet. Shit. Right. Are we, we're still eating crap. We're still yeah. eating shitty right now. Well, that's the red flags for me. If I have to literally supplement and bring things in outside of just what I could grow and eat and, and I'm going to be deficient, you're trying to tell me that's what's best for me? Yeah. I have a hard time with that. Yeah. I mean, let's go back to the original conversation, which is let's eat with healthy. We, we haven't finished that conversation yet. Now we're moving to here's what's best, the environment. Oh, and by the way, if you vote for this guy, he's against it. You vote for this guy, they're for it. We're going to create a lot of problems. And the statistics are true. I, I just, like I said, I just, I've just i been reading up on this, how malnutrition is going up during the most plentiful times in all of human history. Malnutrition? Are you kidding me? Yeah. That's crazy. We should not be malnourished. We're overfed and under Everything's in excess. Yes. It's a matter of now like bringing and presenting your body with the best forms of nutrients. Yeah. Now, I'm not, I, and again, I, I want to be very, very clear. I'm not against... Veganism. If you plan it well, it can be very healthy. I don't think it's for everybody, but for the people that it's for, yeah. I think it could be great. Well, it's just the things they they attach it with, like like I said, the carbon footprint thing. If you want to, if you want to reduce your carbon footprint, footprint, ride your fucking bike to work twice a yeah. week and have two vegan days a month. There you go. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And you and you'll probably buy be, a smaller house. Right. There's so yep. many other things that you can be doing, and that argument I think is such a terrible one. I've shared that article. I mean, they said they've broken it down to like the difference is like two percent. Mm. It's like two percent. And that's not even taking into account the argument that you made, Sal. So I, when people say that to me, I'm like, there's so many other ways that you can reduce your carbon footprint than simply just cutting no. out steak and meat. No. That's more dangerous to your health. Now, let me ask you guys this question, because I know what the answer would be for me. But let's say you took your average client, okay? Your average client. And uh, first thing first, I've learned this through, uh, it took me a few years to learn this as a trainer, but I started to learn that there were a few things I could communicate that would have a big positive impact. And then there were things that if I communicated too much, they were just paralyzed with too much information or it just wasn't effective. Okay. But imagine if you took your average client and all you communicated with about diet was avoid meat. What do you think would happen to that client? <laughs> do you think that they would have gotten leaner or do you think they would have gotten fatter? Right. It's not even a question. Right. What do yeah. you, fatter. Fatter for fatter. sure. Well, we're already a super carb. I mean, I'm the one that made the argument from early on that I don't even like us not you know, telling people that they need help with protein. I think we already under consume protein as it is. So I've had many, many, especially my female clients had to boost protein. If I were to tell my client, that same client that just avoid meat altogether, we'd be, we'd be up a shit store and they would be re replacing that with their already super carb heavy diet with more. No, the, the most effective thing I ever, if I had to communicate one thing with nutrition that was like really effective by itself, it was avoid heavily processed foods. Like that was the best thing I could tell. If I told the client, hey, look, don't worry about anything else. Just avoid heavily processed foods. I would notice their calories would drop considerably and then they would replace it with whole natural foods in the form of meats, vegetables, fruits, nuts, and seeds. That was the single most effective thing that I could, that I could do. If I just told people to avoid meat, I, I know what would happen. They'd replace it with processed food. They get fatter and then we'd have to deal with potential nutrient deficiencies, in which case I'd have to tell people to supplement. And here's always been my argument too. I, I think supplements are okay. Um, I'm glad we have them. But if I could, if people can eat in a way that means that they don't need supplements, that's the best way to eat. 
Wouldn't you guys agree? Okay. Oh, yeah. I think that's the best way to eat. Well, the, the position that I have on this is, is very similar to the position that I have on CrossFit, and that is this. I, don't, I am not anti-CrossFit. I'm anti-people that have lots of success with CrossFit pushing it on everybody else, mm -hmm. just like I'm not anti-vegan. If you are running a vegan diet and it's great for you, your health is great, you're hitting all your nutrient targets, fucking awesome. Stay with it. Keep doing it. More power to you. Just like the kid who's running CrossFit, has been doing it for five years, has no problems, no aches, pains, has a great squat, has a great overhead press, has all these things that moves. But the problem is you're not the fucking majority. Mm -hmm. yeah. And most of my fucking career, I trained the majority. I trained all the average Joes and the normal people. And I hate when we take something that we've had a lot of success with and then we try to push it on everybody else yeah. as an agenda. That's all it is. Like it's not for everybody. Yeah. I would I would uh, and I, I would say this if you want to if you're really interested in going vegan, just do your due diligence, do your research, look at people who are experts in that space and see what foods you need to eat, what foods you need to combine, what you need to eat a lot of, what you need to avoid so that you do it the right way. Because again, if you do it right, you're probably going to be okay. And if it works for you, that's absolutely fine. But do not go into it like this. Don't go into it just avoiding meat. You're going to cause yourself a lot of different problems. I'm really looking forward to that documentary that's coming out. Um, I think it's in a few weeks, the one that Arnold With was Arnold. promoting. Mm -hmm. And it looks like they're talking about. I suspect, and I'm going to say this right now because I don't know for sure, but I want to be, I want to, I want to see if I can pre predict this. I suspect what's going to follow that is going to be a line of plant-based supplement, of course, supplements that of they're going to sell. Of course, and it's yeah. it's like smart business so right now. I mean, it would be the, the most brilliant thing for us to do right now. I mean, mm -hmm. it's if it would be much easier for us to ride the wave and make money than to come out with a counter message like we are right now. And like I said, we have no dog in this fight. I've got mm -hmm. no diet to sell you. I've got no no supplement to sell you. I got none of that stuff. It's just simply us explaining to you our experience with all the thousands of people that we thousands of people we've handled in person and probably tens of thousands of people that we've interacted with virtually it's just not the most ideal diet for the majority for any of the reasons and arguments that everybody tries to sell you on yeah just don't be a sheep man like like think for yourself i know like public opinion definitely sways a lot of your average people and and this is this is one of those things that's just going to keep you know moving that direction saying that meat is is not ideal and plant-based diet is the best diet and so just check mm -hmm. yourself when you hear that information and make sure you're always like doing your own research excellent and with that go to mindpumpfree.com and download our guides they're all absolutely free you can also find us all on instagram you can find justin at mindpumpjustin adam at mindpumpadam and you can find me at mindpumpsal